The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. y hermanas. Bienvenidos to another episode of Meetings of the Minds in partnership with BronxNet Television. As you already know, these segments were geared toward making sure you know who our members and partners and affiliates are. Each episode will enlighten you about partnerships uh, that our members are building to bring more resources to you. More importantly, you know more importantly, you will find out who's supporting you so that you can reciprocate and support them. We are still a membership organization. So if you're not yet a member, being fácil, super easy, just visit www.hispanicchamber.nyc, www.hispanicchamber.nyc, or follow us on LinkedIn, New York City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. That's right, we're going to make you work all spelled out, New York City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce on LinkedIn. Today, we are here to talk about advertising, not just any type of advertising, but digital advertisement with a company called Intersection. So we are introducing Intersection to you, even though you see them all over the place. You engage with these digital kiosks on a daily basis. So let me introduce you to the people behind it all. Let's learn how Intersection is helping small businesses in New York recover from the tragic hit they faced in 2020. Please welcome Nancy Santiago, who currently leads the multicultural advertisement efforts, and her colleague, Roz Krensman, who is the VP for the East Coast region at Intersection. Hello, Nancy and Roz. How are you and how are the families? Hi there, great to be here. Family is great, the kids are in school at the moment, so we should be all good to go today. <laughs> Everything's going well, great to be here. Fantastic, how about you, Ross? How are you and how's the family? Uh, family is great. They, my wife is actually with their family in Guadalajara, so it's the first break I've had. Uh, I miss them terribly, but I know they're having a lot of fun and eating some delicious food. So uh, I'm very excited to spend my time this morning with you uh, and talk about our products. So. Sounds good. Congratulations for some time off for the whole family. <laughs> and I'm, Nancy, and I'm, I'm glad your family's doing well. Uh, Nancy, what is Intersection? Please enlighten us. Yes, happy to do so. So Intersection is an out-of-home media and tech company. So we are in 16 markets across the country and soon to be 17. Um, and we technically, we, we bridge the gap between the digital and physical worlds. And we bring digital, video, and traditional media to streets in a relevant, targeted, and a dynamic way. That's how I, I like to think of digital out of home as sort of like the remix to the traditional media with like the new stuff, you know, we're the remix. I like the remix and with, with this remix, I mean, the remix is everywhere, right? We see it every single day. They are, they are the kiosks that we can even charge our phones in. So we're constantly and consistently interacting with them. Ross, what are the advantage of these digital kiosks? compared to other traditional media? Yeah, I mean, it's a really uh, customer friendly and, and business friendly channel. And what I mean by that is it allows you to utilize different dynamic creatives that can really speak specifically to a community in a specific area of the city. Uh, Link NYC is 3,500 screens across uh, New York. It is the largest digital network in the world and since each screen is individually addressable, you can have a different creative run on every single uh, link, which allows you to talk directly to that person at that time based on what they're going through and really connecting with them and giving them 
a relevant message to help whether uh, inform them of something or to you know give them a solution to something that they could be facing that day. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a really powerful media that we're really excited about, uh, and we've seen some really great small businesses take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that you use the word connection. You know, it is an immediate connection with uh, the consumer and and pretty much all people, right? Why is it so important for small businesses to know about this option? Why is that connection so important? Yeah, I think it's because it's a it's a way for a business to extend their storefront or extend awareness directly to people within their specific community, and that's one of the biggest advantages of Link is that allows you to do that in a cost-effective and strategic way, but also, you know, every dollar counts now more than ever. And this limits the waste, right? Because you're talking directly to your, your consumers or your potential clients right in the communities. So that's why it's so important because there's so many different ways that you can advertise now, and but there but there's only really one way to actually be in the DNA of the community. And, and this is good. I love how we segue into cost effectiveness, right? And a lot of times, uh, Nancy, and I'm going to direct this question to you, as uh, Black and Latino-owned businesses, we tend to be intimidated sometimes because we fear the prices that we don't even know about, right? So why is it important for Latino and Black-owned small businesses to understand this particular advertising uh, option? And why should we uh, definitely look into it and learn more. There are approximately like 220,000 businesses headquartered here and over approximately 90% are small businesses. So when we start to trickle down on what that is with the minority owned businesses, where they are in the boroughs, I mean, everywhere. And this is exactly where our screens are. This is exactly the time where businesses need to be creative and how they re-engage their customers and and say you know well we're here we're still open we're still doing this and we are offering now this and you know this is such a, a a unique platform to be able to convey these messages so you know they get the visibility with being out on the street um where they their brick and mortar could be they can be creative with their digital um you know their assets and put up a QR code so people can, you know, scan something and go and understand what the promotion is. Um, they can also run ads in language. So, if, you know, if we're looking at targeting and speaking to, you know, the Puerto Ricans in the South Bronx, you know, or we're talking to the Dominicans in the Heights, or we're talking to the South American, Central Americans in Corona Queens, we can get creative with the language that speaks to them. So, you know, I can say, wait, you know, look at what we have going on here, our new promotion, or, you know, mire señora, venga a ver cómo está mi, lo, lo nuevo que estamos abriendo, que no, nunca hemos cerrado, estamos aquí para la gente. You know, you can do this with this platform. And then you can also choose the timing. This is such, such a key component to our digital screens that you can put a message in the morning when you're taking the kids to school or when the kids are on break. You can then look at something that's going to be in the afternoon when they're coming home from school or during the break, you know, something that um, you're offering um, free ice cream to, to the kids coming out of camp um, just to get people in the door. There's so many things that the community does that no one knows about. Mm -hmm. And so this is where it is. This is where, this is this platform that marries, you know, the radio, the TV, the print, like all these different components and boom, you have it on Link NYC and how you can target specific times of day in language at uh, different times and, and have different creatives to be fun and engaging. So, I mean, I, I think being used in the right way, our community can truly not, not just, you know, survive these times, but really thrive with something like this. It's so important. And what I heard was definitely is very customizable and you're able to meet that particular business owner where they are, right? And you're also able to get them to think a little deeper as to besides growing your business, how do you contribute? How do you engage? How do you become one with the community that you're serving? How do you serve, right? And that's what uh, I heard a lot of in your response. And this next question can go to either Ross or Nancy. 
Uh, is there an example of a small business you have helped rise above the challenges of COVID? And if so, can you take us through that? Uh, I can jump on that one, Nance. So we have a great, we've developed such a wonderful partnership with the Harlem Children's Zone. And basically they came to us right during the, about the beginning of the pandemic. And we're trying to figure out ways in which they can get important messaging about programming out to the community uh, because they're just, you know, just trying to help the community and, and they're just part of the DNA there. And we started doing a very small campaign uh, around mid-year earlier or mid-year and it has just continued. They have continuously grown the program. They get such great feedback from it. And what they've done is they've been able to talk about all the initiatives and they talked about health and different things with the vaccine and being safe. But also they talked about other things that they're pushing, whether it was camps or other, other stuff that they're doing within the community to let people know that they're there, they're a resource and they're here to help. That is fantastic. And I know uh, going a step further, Nancy, I have been able to see the partnerships that you have been able to create with nonprofit organizations such as uh, I, could, I think we are all human or, uh, or Hispanic start and also Goya. Can you talk to us a little bit about these uh, very important partnerships between business and organizations as you work on promoting the Latino community? Sure, of course, happy to. Um, so it was, it was a very um, unique um, it, it situation where, you know, it was sort of like the, the, the right timing, the right place um, kind of thing that happened there, that dynamic. Um, Goya has, is celebrating 85 years this year. And so they were looking to um, just how to send a message how to say that they are about gathering families. Um, they are about empowering Latinos. And so we had been running um, representation campaigns on link from uh, Women's Hist from Hispanic Heritage Month, Black History Month, and then that sort of resonated with them. And they said, you know, we, we love this. We, we love this for the community. We love to see people that look like us, that buy our food and, and you know, that the kids who live in these neighborhoods can look up to and understand that there are other people out there that look like them who are moving the culture forward, who are breaking those glass ceilings, who are paving the path so it's better for them. And so these conversations started leading into more of a, let's look at this partnership with We Are All Human Hispanic Star who has been doing a lot of the community work. As you know, I leave the hub in New York. And so it was sort of all of my worlds aligned. Um, and and uh, Goya stepped in and said, I wanna do this women's empowerment campaign. Hispanic Star had said, you know, can we work with Link on um, a women's empowerment campaign for Women's History Month? And then there you go, there's uh, Hispanic Star with their beautiful creative and there's Goya who supports that message. And then there are beautiful screens to take that message to the streets and, and, and spread the love. <laughs> Thank, yeah. thank you so much. I think it was important for our um, audience to just see full circle how uh, LinkedIn and digital advertisement is going to be very important for, for all aspects of the, their business from growth to service, right? And that's uh, very, very, very important. So we're just wrapping up and I just want to know, how do we get in contact with you? Um, very easy. I will give you my direct email. It is nancy.santiago at intersection.com. And I'm happy. I mean, I've worked with so many of the small businesses um, who've been around 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Probably every single one at some point or other throughout my career, I have stepped in the door and I have spoken with them. And um, I'm, I just, you know, I want to let them know I'm here for you. And I'm also here for the entrepreneurs who are new to the business. I'm happy to, to help guide them through this process and understanding how to reach the audience in this dynamic, using this dynamic um, platform. Uh, thank you so much, Nancy and Ross, for being here with us today. I know that you are uh, working on becoming official members of the New York City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And with that, we'll definitely be bringing you back. But talking to our audience right now, 
If you want more information on the New York City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, it's super easy. Just visit www.hispanicchamber.nyc or follow us on LinkedIn. New York City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. That's right. All spelled out, my friends. Until next time, stay blessed. Muchas gracias.